ancient, possibly pre-Islamic Christian monastery discovered in the United Arab Emirates. On November 3rd, officials announced news of discovering an ancient Christian monastery, perhaps predating Islam, on uh, Sinia Island off the coast of the United Arab Emirates, or UAE. The monastery possibly dates back to the years before Islam spread across the Arabian Peninsula. It was the second monastery discovered in the Emirates after archaeologists found the first Christian monastery in the country on Surbani Yas Island in the early 1990s. The carbon-dated samples from the ancient monastery's foundations determined that the monastery was founded between 534 and 656 AD. Prophet Muhammad was born around 570 AD and passed away in 630 AD after conquering Mecca in Saudi Arabia. A collection of buildings allegedly, possibly... Allegedly, we don't know that for oh, sure. Okay, Go yes. On. According to legend. Um, a collection of buildings possibly belonging to a pre-Islamic village, according to archaeologists, were also located a few hundred miles from the monastery. Timothy Power, an associate professor of archaeology at the UAE University, said, quote, it's really fascinating discovering because in some ways it's a hidden history. It's not something that's widely known. You know why I say allegedly? Because nothing was like this was found around Mecca, which is supposed to be, supposed to have been the center of trade around that area. Okay? But no. You find something like this in UAE. So hmm. the, the whole Mecca thing, being as a, a significant of a city as the Quran claims and everything, as the like Syrah claims and all. Just mm. yeah. So Armin, what do you think the significance of this is in terms of countering dominant Islamic narratives about the Arabian Peninsula? Well, I don't know about this specific one, but it, it just reminds us I guess, once again, okay, that we have been digging and digging and digging and we have found nothing like this around Mecca, okay? So mm. it challenges the Islamic narrative, mm -hmm. right? So I just a reminder of that. Because if there was, like, you, you will see, like, stuff like this like, are found, you know? It, it is kind of like <clears throat> the story of, um, the, the in the Bible where the where the Jews were supposed to have been slaves in Egypt, and they have like that mass exodus. Like if they, if that actually had happened, there would be way more evidence. Like there would be evidence for it. Like you don't have a movement that size from Egypt to Israel without for forty trace. years without a trace. Without any trace, any archaeology, like, like that. yeah, sure, no, that did not happen. Also, the war against the like the people that lived, um, the in the Canaanites, <clears throat> the uprising, like oh yeah, sure, there's no arrows here, there's no swords here. Like the uprising seemed to have been like with not a war, it was like a peasant versus master kind of revolution, hmm. and the Jews were already living there. So anyway, it just like shows like the narratives of the Bible and the Quran are constantly challenged by archaeological findings mm -hmm. i don't know exactly how this plays into that but it just reminds me of that well i mean i just meant in terms of i think maybe in popular consciousness people just assume that the arabian gulf was like kind of always this way but it wasn't it had a very vast and rich pre-islamic culture i mean people like muslims are more aware of the pre-islamic culture because they highlight the extent mm. to which muhammad was a counter to that right so there is actually an awareness obviously of the paganism oh yeah the the, the jahiliyat period which is the they call it that that time before the islam the age of ignorance mm -hmm. actually they call the entire world before islam the age of ignorance but they're like they, right. they, <laughs> yeah so the way that you, when you read islamic um, account of the world they make it seem like the whole world was in chaos before islam showed up kind of like in christianity i was fascinated to see like in christianity like oh yeah before the old testament before the ten 
commandments like nobody knew like that you're not supposed to steal or murder like like people were just like randomly killing each other left and right before the ten commandments right we kind of have the same narrative in islam they're like the age of ignorance which is the age before islam the narrative is that in these regions people just buried their daughters alive like you're like oh another daughter to bury alive just like that's like almost certainly did not happen okay especially because girls were valuable commodity very valuable commodity but people do do that they do that to this day i know but not on a mass scale that islam like experts have said came out and said like the way islam says like men just always bury their girls alive uh like that was like something that was so rampant it, it almost certainly did not happen back before islam you know maybe mm-hmm. there was one guy who did it and there's a story like just like went viral but it wasn't like it wasn't a widespread practice at all but mm-hmm. islam like makes it seem like that was just the norm mm-hmm. and actually if you look at what the actual norm was before uh, islam the norm was a lot better than islam what islam introduced in that area um like women's rights were respected very much um a lot more than what islam introduced in fact like it, muslims are like oh we came and we gave inheritance rights to women islam and before islam women couldn't even own property and like what are you talking about muhammad's wife before islam was a rich businesswoman like what are you talking <laughs> like no based on your own narratives um you had property rights for women before islam okay and also the, the woman in, in medina had a lot more rights than women okay i'm getting into too much detail but i, <laughs> I don't want to i don't want to get yeah um yeah so oh by the way islam i don't know if this is going to tie into that but a lot of scholars have suggested that islam originally was not even islam until the umayyad and abbasid made it islam like during the time of muhammad okay what islam was was a christian sect that eventually it turned into islam based on my as an upper side changed it rebranded it enough for it to become its own religion right so i don't know if this whole christian monastery being found close to there how that's going to help how is that going to tie into that narrative or not but it would be interesting to see because well, it certainly almost shows the influence in the region in a very c- yeah. close time frame yeah the presence of christians in that region was uh is very well documented and the brand of christianity that was there at the time of uh, when islam or the proto the proto islam started to show up was an is was a christianity that did not consider jesus to be the son of god right uh, it's considered jesus right. it's considered yeah it was a christianity that considered jesus jesus to be a prophet of god um and because you know when the when christianity was being uh, canonized all these heretical views like left the main christian centers and some of them went came and to these places but as, as from fear of persecution they went and came to these other places including in arabia right and that sect of christianity one of those sects of christianity which was considered muhammad to be a prophet of god eventually turned into islam and if you could you could actually see that uh, a lot of the uh, quranic verses in the quran were actually uh, christian prayers that wanted to set itself apart from the mainstream christianity was taking shape by constantly emphasizing that God has no sons um, and Muhammad was a prophet, only a prophet and God has no sons, right? But mm-hmm. the fact, a lot of people are saying Muhammad originally referred to Jesus, not to Muhammad. Eventually, Oh, yeah. because Muhammad is actually a title. A title, yes. It's a not title. a name. <gasps> oh, yeah. wow, that makes sense yeah you could even see you could even see that the for for a hundred of years even though the oh my uh, for for 100 years after the alleged death of muhammad uh there's no mention of muhammad in any islamic writings even though there was a lot of writings and if you see islamic coins like the coins that by the omayyad dynasty had actually had crosses on it 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, none of this is uh, proven beyond reasonable doubt, but this is the theories that are being put forward. Mm -hmm. so I, just don't I mean, it's fascinating to dig into. Um, yeah. Which is kind of why I wanted to like talk about this news because I know that you're like so knowledgeable about these things. I'm like, let's just let him go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't consider this to be knowledgeable. I just like some. You're yeah. more knowledgeable I mean, than people. That's a fact. Okay. Sure. On this subject. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not All saying right. you're a scholar. <laughs> Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.